So there's one question in already. So if you want to find the recording from last week, it's on our museum website. And if you click on, on the homepage, there's a section for photos at Zoom. If you click on that, there'll be a link to our Vimeo page where you can watch our last uh, photos at Zoom with uh, Kristen. Yeah, oh, perfect, someone put the link in there, great. Cool, well, it is now 12 o'clock, so let's get started. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name's Emily. I'm a graduate student at Columbia College, and I'm also a graduate intern and curatorial assistant at the Museum of Contemporary Photography. Uh, so I'm gonna be a docent for today. Uh, so if those of you are familiar with print viewings in the museum setting, we have kind of a very special and open collection. So you can come and you can request to see work. You can come and see our pre-made sets, uh, and you can come and like, be able to see photographs in real life, which is like a pretty magical thing. Uh, so I would highly recommend when the world is less like this to come into the museum and look at the work in person and like have a discussion about kind of just the different ways that photographers use the medium of photography to like talk about concepts, to talk about the medium, to critique it, to push it, the, the different ways that um, photography and photographers use it and like make kind of magical pieces of work. Uh, so I hope you guys were all able to come to last week's photos at Zoom, which was run by my boss, Kristen Taylor, uh, where she kind of went over the fundamentals of photography and kind of went through a lot of work in our collection that is by significant artists who have kind of just like really important points of photography, right? Like, you know, Harry Callahan, we had Roy de Carava, like really significant artists using the medium and critiquing it and pushing it and kind of making work that that is like become very fundamental and important in the making of the medium right so to go off what Kristen was talking about last week this week we're going to photograph we're going to talk about photographing the domestic space um, which I propose this topic to Kristen because so many of us are now stuck in our homes and so many of us are still makers and creators and and want to be you know, still producing work, still using art as something that we love and want to make. So thinking about how photographers have already used the domestic space as both like a backdrop, as a another character within the narrative, as this kind of space where they can explore and engage with, thinking about how photographers use the domestic space and, and kind of the different ways different artists are using that. So we're going to kind of cover a few different artists today who are using that. Um, this is well, I put up this slide for future reference. If you guys want to come into a real life print viewing where myself or one of the other graduate students or Kristen Taylor or some of the other curatorial staff will be able to uh, talk to you about work in real life. So we have set print viewings already where we cover some pre-existing topics or you can do um, custom print viewings, which is what today's gonna be. So you can like select specific artists you're interested in, specific topics and we can kind of like talk about them, discuss them. Um, generally, print viewings are more run by the audience and by the group, um, whereas today it's gonna be more of a lecture run by me, where we kind of talk about the work and kind of think about like how it, how it functions as an object, as well as how it kind of thinking about the concepts that the artists are talking about and how we as viewers read them and experience them and what other additional things that like we can take from the work. Um, so having said all of that, uh, let's get started with the first artist today, which is Cecil McDonald, uh, who is a Chicago-based artist and as well is a professor at Columbia College Chicago, who has been making this body of work in the company of Black uh, for about seven years now, uh, or a seven year long body of work where he's really focused on dismantling these kind of pre-existing expectations, stereotypes and restrictions that Black individuals get from kind of the society and like white American society, right? So he talks a lot about um, these two kind of polar opposite expectations, or like categories that black individuals have to exist within in America. It's either ideas of black misery or black excellence. So black misery is more when black individuals are expressed as like victims of violence or victims of poverty or, or being like negatively affected by the kind of societal structures and they're like struggling and that's how they're represented or it's black excellence where they are these you know pillars of the community or are like you know athletes or performers or very significant individuals within pop culture and these are kind of very far ends of either end of the spectrum and these are the expectations that are given to black individuals 
So what Cecil McDonald is doing and with his photographs, he's, he's trying to fill that gap and like highlight the kind of, the kind of ordinary lives that are existing within that space and that like black people have regular lives and don't have to exist within these kind of very restrictive spaces. Um, so one thing as well about Cecil McDonald's work that I really appreciate is that he uses his own friends and family and people in his community. And I feel like you can see that within the work, this kind of like intimate relationship that you can feel. Like when we look at photographers making portraiture, we have to think about like the space itself and what it means with a photographer being in there, right? Like when a photographer is in a space, they've inherently changed the environment with the camera. And so he is working with people that he knows, you can feel they're comforted in the way that they relax in front of the camera and the way that they are free to like perform and be themselves and, and not kind of be restricted or be, be contained or, or have to exist in any certain way. You can feel this kind of very beautiful like document of this natural interaction that's happening. Um, which is what McDonald was trying to also highlight with his work, like these, these very normal, natural interactions that happen every day that aren't on this like expected spectrum that kind of white America is forcing on black individuals. Um, he kind of just has this very beautiful way of making and you see these kind of very intimate spaces as well when we like talk about a lot of the work today, thinking about what it means to photograph in an intimate space and how like the home space is a very private, secluded, like space that you only let certain people into, right? It's not like a, a public space where anyone can engage and come into it as like a private, more intimate environment. So thinking about what it means to take a picture of someone in their private space and, and document them in kind of an environment that is their own and, and also like reflects them in some way, right? Um, Coming up this photograph, which is probably one of my favorites within this body of work. It's just like magical and sensational and there's something so beautiful about the light and the gesture and the way McDonald is like photographing this very, as well like common experience and something that other black people can like connect to and, and have like had the same kind of feeling and, and know what this, this moment is like, right? So thinking about the importance of representation and the importance of seeing your own self in photographs, in art, in visual history, and, and being able to like look at that representation and see yourself. And, and we know as a, as a society how significant and important that is, right? So McDonald really is using photography as a way to document everyday lives, as well, I think he describes, I wanna read a quote from him that I have, that I really like. Um, the photographs I've been making ask questions, where are the people that, uh, that make up the space in between? And so his work answers the question by saying, they are here, they are important, and they must be seen. So like how important it is that we have this visual documentation of, of ordinary life and kind of regular gestures that are seen every day and, and aren't these like, performative roles or these expectations or these stereotypes are just kind of human beings living their lives, um, which is something that's really beautiful about this work. As well, I love the way the home space functions as kind of this like backdrop to these beautiful tableaus that are happening in front of it, right? It's like this, this space where these people can just like exist within and, and be in, and not have to worry about like outside expectations or outside uh, influences or opinions. It's kind of this this separate space, uh, which is really beautiful in McDonald's work. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments about this work? I'm gonna try and like after each artist, we can take a couple of minutes. Uh, if anyone has anything they wanna say in the chat or we can wait till the end and, and talk about, if you guys as well see any connections between the artists or any topics we're kind of like talking about, I would love to hear if you guys are seeing any links between the two. Ooh, that's a good question. So uh, someone just asked, what degree are these staged versus uh, catching the moment? So I think that there, there's kind of like a 50-50 level to it. I think there is a level where McDonald's in the space documenting real interactions that are happening. But as well, I think that there's probably a lot of reenactment. Um, oh, amazing. See some McDonald's here. This is incredible. Um, well, so yeah, so they're all staged, uh, which is pretty incredible. I didn't realize that all of the work itself was actually staged by him. They, I, I feel like that's pretty magical that I was completely unaware of that. You can't really feel that. You can't feel any rigidness. They feel very organic and very, very, um, very like real full documents, which I really love. Hold on a second. 
I'm going to let my screen go inside of photos. Um, so I don't know how to get rid of the, I can't get rid of the white border, sadly. This is the slideshow presentation. Um, but, but I would recommend when the world is not like this that you all guys come into the museum and see this print in real life because it is such a beautiful photograph and the way that um, you see this gesture kind of playing out and you see like it's, it's like translucent. It's, it's very beautiful. Um, so I'd really recommend to see these prints in real life. They're really amazing. Um, I'm gonna go to the next photographer. Uh, which is Latoya Re Frazier, who is another Chicago artist, who as well um, is a professor at SAIC, whose this body of work is a pretty phenomenal one. Uh, so this is the notions of family, where Latoya Re Frazier was documenting her family uh, in response to kind of the socioeconomic environment of her family, uh, of the town that she was in, in uh, Braddock, Pennsylvania. So kind of documenting this history of um, the, uh, the kind of history of the steel mills and how they had like come into this town, created this very intense like economic boom, which Latoya Ruby, Ruby Frazier's grandmother got to experience and seeing this very like thriving economy. And then you see the mother's generation watching that slowly decline and watching the, the kind of like economic hardships that begin to happen the way that that everything societally kind of shifts and changes. And, and then you go to Latoya Ruby Frazier's generation watching kind of the like heavy impact that it has when all these steel mills have left the community and, and it's just her and her family and, and other members of the community trying to live and exist within this space when, when the kind of steel mills have decided to, to leave them. As well, she talks a lot about pollution and the impact of these kind of spaces on the health of people in the community, the environment itself. So kind of looking at her generation as the ones feeling a lot of like different impact from it. Um, so it's kind of a really interesting body of work in the way that it talks about generations too. And it talks about like time points and kind of watching these three women like interact with each other, navigate the space and, and have to uh, like kind of thinking about the ways that each of the generations have experienced this town very differently, right? And like these very different reactions and experiences. Um, so it's kind of as well, the work really centers around the home space and really centers around these three women and is thinking about like their experiences as women, as black women um, and people in their community in like a working class environment, how they kind of are forced to like, there are a lot of hurdles and complications and, and them just trying to like exist within this space. It is very, very different and, and very different from each of them and their like lives and experiences, right? Um, so the work consists a lot of images of Latoya and her self-portraiture and then also images of the kind of town itself, um, which I like this kind of push and pull between the interior and the exterior and like this home space being like a, a sanctuary or a private space where they are free to kind of be like away from or secluded from these kind of like large or complicated things that are happening outside. Uh, and the kind of like struggles of the socioeconomic environment outside of them. So you kind of move between these two spaces, which I think is really interesting. Um, and you kind of look at this like family space is very much the, the constant or this kind of like absolute that is happening, right? While everything else is shifting and changing and, and you're watching houses be destroyed or, or dilapidated homes collapsing. You kind of have this like home space that is, is safe for them. Um, which is a really beautiful kind of body of work. As well, I want to bring up to something in print viewings I like to talk about is kind of the intended visual experience of the work and how artists might make, like specifically photographers make work for a specific form. So this work was uh, created in a book form, um, which is something that I would recommend if you ever are able to get your hands on the book. It's a completely different experience. You have text from Latoya, Ruby Frazier and kind of her it's very like intimate and raw, like the images are too, right? There's like a very honest way in which he's making this work and it's a very kind of, uh, I don't know, the way that she kind of is being very open and, and is being very, uh, very honest with the like way that she's, she's documenting her experience and her family. And I think that she, um, 
she kind of does it in a way that's really beautiful and as well like you can feel this honesty you can feel this openness and and as well I think photographing with your family to allow you that kind of opportunity right like thinking about who you um are able to photograph right now too in general but in in kind of in life all the time like who do you have a a kind of close relationship to like when we talk with McDonald's well like people that you have an intimate relationship with the way you can photograph them the way it can be different um and kind of the way that you can use the the relationships you have uh for your art form um someone just asked what the title of Fraser's book is so this is uh, the notions of family it's a really beautiful object and as well there's some if you go on her website as well there are a few video pieces in the body of work too where she collaborates with her mom um i think this is a really magical work as well when you think about like collaboration and the people working together to make to make a beautiful body of work um and i think there's just as well like fraser's presence in front of the camera the way that she she acts as this like kind of constant force and figure within the space is is really powerful and and she kind of I think it's always interesting watching photographers photograph themselves or watching photographers be photographed in the way that they act in front of the camera and how that might be different than than someone who isn't a photographer or someone who isn't as comfortable or familiar with photography as as kind of a, a medium that they would use. Um, do we have any kind of comments or words about Latoya's work? I think that she She's kind of she's just like a powerhouse and is making incredible work a lot of her more recent work is also really incredible i i will admit i being able to pick every single artist in this print viewing allows me to geek out about every single one of them uh because i'm a big fan of of all of their work and i think that the way that they all use the domestic space is really really interesting and really powerful and they navigate it in a lot of different ways um Someone asked, how do I feel about the use of black and white change in the domestic space? That's really interesting. I hadn't thought about kind of the the difference within color and black and white. Um, but I don't know. I think, I mean, I think we all know that like black and white photography has a very different feel than color photography. And, and there's something a little bit more, I know it creates a different kind of emotional reaction and emotional response. And, and it is, it does make the space very different, I think. I think this work would be completely different if it was in color, and I think it would create, create a really different um, kind of interaction with it. So I, I don't know. I, I also don't think I could imagine this work in color. I think it has to be in black and white, and I, I don't quite know why, but I think it just, um, like the mood, mood really feels like that. What are some of the other questions? Um, is there any recommended writing about Fraser's work? Um, I do not know any off the top of my head, but I can um, uh, make a list of kind of articles to send out to everyone if they want to have a look and like read up more on her work. I can make a list of kind of articles about each of the artists. Uh, if you guys have some follow up reading, I would really recommend looking more into Fraser's work. Um, I'm going to click to the next one. We have Lisa Linvey. Uh, who is also an alum of my graduate program and this is her body of work where she is focusing on uh, photographing her family in their home in the domestic space uh, and is kind of documenting the family and kind of talking about how they're navigating the impact and the influence of her mother's mental illness. Uh, and the, the thing about this work that I really like is the fact that we never get to see the mother. The mother is never photographed, never documented, we don't know who she is. Um, and so she, she is like not in the space at all, but we can still feel her. We know her presence is there. We're still like aware of her existence, right? Which I think is a really kind of interesting thing that also photography does in a way that maybe other mediums can't or, or something about photography that is really special is that like you can talk about other things and other people and other, uh, other aspects of like influencing the scene without ever witnessing them, right? So her work is really powerful in the way that it kind of documents this as well, kind of like somewhat universal, like an experience that a lot of us can connect to and, and, and understand. And so the way she's documenting that, again, a really honest, open, raw kind of way, right? Which again, I think this is something to keep coming back to with thinking about who you photograph and the relationship you have with those people and how that 
affects the making of the image and like having an intimate relationship with someone really allows you to maybe make images that you couldn't make with with like a stranger or someone that you don't know as well or a model or something but making work about your family is, is very different um, or your community or your friends right so the work is all of her father her two twin brothers and a sister and then it's also photographs of the house space as well um, this is a more recent photograph from the body of work and I think it is my absolute favorite within it. There's something so sensational about it, the use of color, his gesture, the kind of this like half gentleness but the still like very masculine presentation that he's doing, the way that he, I don't know, the way he looks at the camera, the way he exists within this home space, I find it really beautiful and really powerful and and again I think bringing up like collaboration again when we talk about Latoya Ruby Fraser's work, and also Susan McDonald's work, like thinking about how important collaboration between the photographer and the subject is, and, and that dynamic can really create like a, a powerful image, right? Like having that relationship, allowing the subject to fully be themselves or, or interact within the space um, makes it very different. Um, I also want to bring up this photograph because something Linvey is doing that I, I really appreciate and I really enjoy is the way that she's referencing other visual images and other visual history that we're aware of. Um, so if, if anyone can kind of see the kind of reference that she's making with this image and the gesture and the composition is a direct reflection to the Lost Supper. We're thinking about like kind of this gesture and this pose, this open palm is the same that's happening here, right? Which I think is a really, um, interesting thing that photography can do, art in general, but I'm a photo dork, so I'm thinking specifically about photography and how the way that photography can reference other images and like reference, use visual history that we already have to kind of work off of that and talk more about that. And so we're thinking about, you know, the Last Supper, a very significant and important biblical scene, thinking about as well these like male figures, the kind of patriarch of the society, like of the family structure, thinking about the brothers as well and kind of how this all these like male figures are being documented and represented right i think um linvey has a really beautiful way of photographing men in particular i think that um there's a few artists we'll talk about today but specifically linvey i think is a a really powerful example of the female gaze and how like women can photograph like men in their lives or men that they have intimate relationship with and kind of create these really like tender, beautiful images that, that might be very different if a man was making this photograph, right? Or, or if someone else was making this image. This is like a daughter photographing her father and it, it makes it very kind of, I don't know, a specific kind of interaction and, and photograph. Again, like we always have to remember the photographer physically being in the space, right? That these, there's always a person standing there interacting with another human being and, and how does that kind of dynamic shift and change and how does that affect the way the image is being made or the image is being experienced, right? So these aren't things that just happen. There's like human beings interacting and creating these images, um, which I think is really, I don't know, it's something to always think about. I think it's something that's easy to forget when we look at photographs, forgetting that like, this was like a real space. This was in their garden, this was in their environment. And, and so there's like a moment that happened that was documented. Um, as well, I think the domestic space within this work is really interesting because it kind of, it acts as a metaphor for kind of what's happening within the family, for the mother's health, for the, for the kind of, the way that the family is kind of either, you know, being like influenced and affected by, by the kind of health of the mother and, and how the family has to live within that space, right? Which I think is really interesting, thinking about the home again as like another character so we've kind of we've talked about like with mcdonald's work we talked about this like tableau this backdrop this space for people to perform within now with linvey's work we're thinking about like an additional member of the family or an extension of the space um someone just put in the chat this is absolutely a reference to the birth of venus so thinking again as well about like art history references thinking about the kind of also an image of like as well like that is I guess a very iconic image of a woman too made by a man and thinking about the sentence being flipped of a woman making an image of a man in kind of the same visual reference which I think is is just like a really kind of interesting way to think about how you can use existing visual history and kind of twist it and change it and turn it into kind of a contemporary experience of that right I think is really powerful this is also just such a beautiful photograph it's crazy 
Um, do we have any other like comments about Lindsay's work or any kind of other visual references we're seeing? Oh, someone asked before, uh, can you speak to how knowing the story of a body of work affects the viewer's response to the image? I think that's a really great thing to bring up. Um, one thing in print viewings in general I always like to do is I ask the kind of school groups or the people to tell me what they're seeing, what are they getting, what do they kind of notice about the work, and, and kind of reading the image fully as an image on its own. Um, before I tell them about the concept, before I tell them about the meaning, before we kind of unpack everything else that the work is about. Um, and you kind of see a completely different reaction to the work. Or, or I always like to ask, is the work more interesting or less interesting now that you know what the work is about? And nine times out of 10, it's usually more interesting and it becomes more powerful or more emotive. Um, I think these images on their own are really powerful and, and create these very visceral, like emotional reactions. But, um, but then like knowing what the work is about really creates this additional layer and these kind of like more complicated conversations too. And, and what does it mean to photograph your family? And what does it mean to photograph your family during something that's very complicated like this, but also like a universal experience. So it does really, I think, knowing what the work is about changes how you view or experiencing it. Um, is this artist working in film or digital? I think Lindsay's work is predominantly digital but I could be wrong. Do not quote me. I can look that up and, and give that information to you guys. But I think that she predominantly works in digital, um, or at least as of more recently. Um, oh, cool. Actually, never mind. Somebody just said it's a color negative. Fantastic. So this is actually on film, which is really great, which also makes sense within the beautiful like colors that, that Linvey is getting. Thank you for that. Um, let's move on to Jenna Island, who is one of my favorite photographers. And this is like a, an exceptionally beautiful self-portrait. So Jenna Island is making work about her experiences, specifically going to her husband's grandfather's house in Los Angeles and like documenting herself within that space and kind of photographing her experiences like She's thinking about femininity, she's thinking about the domestic space, she's thinking about black identity, she's thinking about kind of these like symbols of wealth and class and, and these different kind of like lives that are ex being experienced in different spaces. Um, so Jenna Island makes work like I'm exclusively photographing herself or the grandfather's house and then kind of uses that to talk about these larger conversations of of what is the you know, what does it mean for her to be in this space as a black woman? What does it mean? What are these expectations of, of kind of like her navigating this space and, and existing within like a, her husband's family being white and, and being kind of from a very different background and kind of Jenna Island having to navigate all of that. Um, and she does these like really beautiful kind of self portraits. This one in particular is my favorite in the way that she holds herself as this very like powerful and authoritative kind of woman that that is like staring you down in a way that that is not necessarily uncomfortable or or, or too I don't know there's something about it that that feels very the way that she holds herself and represents herself as like this woman in this space it's black woman in this space and kind of how she wants to make an image of herself and document like her own experiences I love talking about this image with with high school groups or like college groups and how kind of the words they use to describe her and, and the way that they kind of see her as this very like powerful woman and this very like she's an authority she's she's in charge she's you know has all this kind of control and the it's through the way that she photographs herself that she's able to do that which I think is really interesting as well something about when I was reading more about this work the the way that the she kind of talks about how the home spaces has changed and transitioned over time that the grandfather's house used to be full of like seven people like the full family used to live there and now it's just him in this mansion by himself and so she's kind of also thinking about isolation and loneliness and what does it mean to live by yourself in a house that's designed for seven or more people and in this huge kind of like intense space right 
um, which are really interesting thing to bring up right now too when we think about isolation, loneliness, these kind of interesting topics that we're all kind of experiencing at once right now. Um, it's interesting looking at a lot of the work today and kind of having everything now coming in a very different lens, right, from our experiences and the way that we all have to kind of live right now and the lenses that we are looking at art and, and kind of content very differently. Um, so I think that, that Janet Island's work is, is very important right now and, and the way that the kind of home space functions within this work is really interesting, as well as this like symbol of wealth and class and, and the symbol of like a very specific life existing within it, this like rich white kind of powerful family existing in Los Angeles and, and kind of what is that symbol and that like home as an object mean, right? Which I think is really interesting and, and the way that she kind of photographs herself within that space. Again, thinking a lot about like, right now, self-portraiture is a really interesting topic that a lot of artists I think should really look more into or start engaging with, and see what it means to photograph yourself and, and how do you, again, being a photographer in front of the camera, like how do you kind of navigate that and, and make yourself kind of look how do you like present or perform in front of the camera when you know how to make a photograph? I think is interesting. Um, someone also made a comment about the tension in her hands from the last photograph. I'm glad you brought that up. This is such a beautiful gesture and detail that's happening and the pose and, and the way that she holds herself, I think is just really sensational and, and very powerful. And again, thinking about how do you photograph yourself and how do you kind of navigate all of these topics that she's navigating at once and fully only using yourself or the domestic space. I think it's really interesting. Does anyone have any more comments about Jan Island's work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few comments about her eyes and her eye contact. That's something I think that also is good to um, bring up too when we think about portraiture, thinking about the gaze and eye contact and what does that mean and, and how kind of powerful it is because when a subject is looking at a camera it means they're looking directly at the viewer right she's making one-to-one -one eye contact with us and she's doing that again on purpose it's intentional she's trying to meet our gaze and and make us look at her and pay attention to her and use the like eye contact as a really powerful kind of aspect of her work right which i think is really interesting it's something to think about when we look at portraiture and this would be a completely different image if she was looking down or looking away or not looking at us right it, it changes the whole way her body language is or the way that she's holding herself. So I think that's something to always think about when you make your own work or also looking at photography, what does like eye contact mean, right? And as well, um, thinking about too, the kind of like the way that we read photographs, right? Is a very special, different thing than the way that we would read um, a painting or a sculpture. So when people, I don't know if you've ever had people like want to show you a photograph of their kids on their phone or something, they'll be like, these are my kids, instead of this is a photograph of my kids. So that kind of like disconnect with reality is something that's really interesting about photographs. So when we look at a photograph of someone, it feels like we're looking at them as a person, not as like this image or this 2D object, right? We're experiencing like a one-to-one -one interaction. So it's kind of interesting when we look at portraiture and the kind of significance of that in photography. Because like, if this was a painting, it'd be very different because paintings continuously remind you that they're a painting, right? Through the texture, the, the, the physicality of the object, sculpture is the same. Photography is the only art form that doesn't really remind you that it's a photograph. It kind of reminds you more of reality. So our like interaction and our engagement with it is very different than if we were looking at a painting or, or a sculpture or, or something else, um, which I think is an interesting tool that we can all use um, as artists, like thinking about what it means to look at photographs and, and think about how we can use the way that people read photographs in our own work and our own making. So, yeah, this is just Jan Island's work is really interesting and it brings up a lot of other conversations about like gaze and, and portraiture and self-portraiture and, and the domestic space um, that I really enjoy. Let me go to the next the very classic Harry Callahan, who, um, for those of you who were here last week, heard my boss, Kristen Taylor, talk about um, Harry Callahan and the fundamentals of the work. And I'm gonna kind of go off of what Kristen was saying and focus a little bit more on the Eleanor series in particular, um, because it's one of my favorite bodies of work. And, and I think it's a really interesting kind of 
like the way that he photographs her and their dynamic and again their collaboration I think is really interesting and important. I did a lot of research about the Eleanor series and I found out a lot of cute tidbits about their relationship um, but they met in 1933. I want to bring this up because I think the timeline when we think about long-term photo collaborations or like artist muse collaborations thinking about like the timeline of it I think is important about when they met when kind of the project itself started how they kind of influenced each other and the like relationship influencing the work so Callahan and Eleanor met in 1933 they got married in 1936 and then Callahan started photographing in 1938 which I think is interesting thinking that like Eleanor came into his life about five years before he was like really making photographs right so I think that's kind of like an interesting timeline because then the Eleanor series became one of the most influential photo series of all time. Like it's kind of a, a pretty well-known body of work that we're all really familiar with in the way that he kind of photographs her. Oh, Cecil just commented this is an early influence of him as well, which I think is really great to think about the way that um, each photographer is kind of influencing one another. And, and you can see this kind of like, again, long-term intimate relationship work and how it influences each other, which I really like. Because um, this body of work itself went for 15 years, which is pretty incredible, and a very long-term um, kind of collaboration between the two of them. Uh, I also read up about Callahan was talking about uh, when he was teaching his students, like recommending them to photograph their own lives and turn the camera on themselves, and, and photographs being a very deeply um, honest and like, his photographs were this reflection of his own life. And so he used photographs to document Eleanor and later their child Barbara and using pho photography is this very intimate, honest kind of thing, um, which I think is really interesting. And I think it's a really powerful element of the work that he kind of used it as this, not quite like diary, but more kind of these beautiful documents of his like experience in his life. Um, rather than, I feel like a lot of this work can be read as these very like formal studies of, of photography and they are that and they do use, he uses light and he uses gesture and, and the figure in, in very interesting ways. But it's also about himself and it is like a, 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 a diary or like a, a self portrait too in a way, which I think is interesting. Um, this photograph I had no idea we had this in our collection. I think it is my absolute favorite Eleanor picture of all time. It's so magical and sensational and, and it's something very kind of, I don't know, kind of uncomfortable about it too that I really enjoy. The like lack of windows, this huge radiator, the kind of her like long hair, the like drawing on the wall. It's such a really interesting photograph. Um, and it, it I don't know, the way Eleanor functions in the work is something that I really am interested in because she is not performing or presenting or or has this persona, but she's always like present is kind of the thing. It's like she's always there in the moment. Um, and she just kind of, I don't know, I feel like in the domestic space, she is this, this figure that is like looming over and around that only the camera is able to capture and the only, the camera is only able to like see her like this, um, which I think is really interesting. As well, Eleanor talked a lot about her experience as the model and, and she would always, she said she would never say no to anything Harry Callahan wanted to make uh, because she trusted him and she like felt really comfortable with him. And so she, she kind of always had faith in like this relationship. And I think that's something that's important to bring up when you think about subjects of photographer dynamics and relationships and, and kind of the comfort and the ease that has to kind of happen. For, for images like this to, to be made, right? This kind of trust in this, this collaboration that, that has to kind of exist. Um, which I really appreciate. There was one more quote from him I was gonna read. Uh, but it was more, yeah, thinking about Eleanor as kind of a, an element of the domestic space, which I really enjoy. Um, as well, this is, this was my favorite photograph of Eleanor until I saw the last slide. But this is, again, another really beautiful image. I love the way that the horizon line just kind of blends in and out of itself. I also thought that this was a really kind of topical image to bring up um, when we think about kind of like social distancing and, and the spaces that we, the way that like Lake Michigan would look right now is probably a lot more like this. Um, whereas reading this image before and talking about it with school groups, 
kind of being like, you never see like Michigan look like this, or you never really see this kind of openness and this emptiness um, and this isolation. Whereas now this is gonna be, again, like reading this image very differently to like our current experience and how we all really want Lake Michigan to look like this right now for this kind of, kind of care that we're taking for one another. So I think it's really interesting how this image is now very different to read and kind of like experience. So I really like, um, does anyone have, oh cool, there's a few like comments about uh, interviews with Eleanor which is amazing. I'm going to try and find all these links and I'll, I'll post a lot of links for everyone to like read into more of this, all the different artists we're going to talk about. Um, that's great. So next I want to talk about Zachary Drucker and Ray Ernst, uh, which is, this is one of my favorite bodies of work of all time. And I wanted to bring it up because, uh, because of the fact that this is like a a really intimate document of a romantic relationship within the home space and also the fact that these images were never intended to be exhibited which I think is really important to think about when we look at them that they're more these like snapshots and these very vernacular photographs that are not intended for us to have like looked at right there's no audience when these images were being made there's no viewer in mind like when we make our own work a lot of the time we're thinking about the viewer and how they'll engage with the work this work was like just purely made for the two of them, which I think is really powerful. And I think it's really interesting when we think about the way that we, the way that we're making work right now too, right? As artists or in general, like thinking about making work fully for yourself rather than other people. And, and again, also thinking about like the intended experience that, that these creators are making, right? Like they didn't intend for this work to be seen. They didn't intend for us to really be talking about it when they were making it. But now it's become this really important, significant um, document of like queer experiences and queer relationships and kind of this beautiful, um, this kind of beautiful document of the two of them for each other. You watch them kind of as well, photograph each other, photograph themselves and, in these very like all run uh like like honest raw kind of ways right very snapshot very quick very fast um and you know, something very beautiful and again very intimate about about these images because of that um someone just asked how and why did they become a part of the collection so eventually the artist did publish this work and allow people to look at it um and then it was later in a a show with the museum uh, disruptive perspectives and so it's a it's a body of work that was like originally made for no one to kind of experience, but then I think eventually the artist realized its significance and its importance as well. We're thinking about, I mean, yesterday was Trans Visibility Day, so thinking about the importance of this like visual record, right, and the importance of representation. So this is both a document of their relationship, but also, this is Zachary, um, but also their uh, transition from uh, male to female and female to male. So kind of documenting their experiences, their relationships with each other, their relationships with their bodies. And so this is really like raw, honest depiction of, of this kind of like uh, point in their life, which I really appreciate. And there's something really kind of, I don't know, magical about seeing them see themselves and seeing them see each other. And as well, we think about the domestic space and this very like private, secluded, secure environment where they're free to, to fully be themselves and fully to kind of perform and, 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 and also like exist outside of these expectations of gender or sex or sexuality, um, which I think is, is really powerful as well like a, a really interesting document too of of like making work with your partner in the domestic space and making work like together as a collaboration again um and again when we think about too like this photograph thinking about eye contact again this photograph of zachary and then this photograph of rays and this like eye contact that's being made and this kind of it's interesting like we were talking about when you see a subject look at a camera it means they're looking at the viewer but this work is kind of interesting because they're looking at each other. So they're not really thinking about us. We, like, Braves is looking at Zachary right now. They're not looking at us. They're not engaging with us, right? Looking at one another, which I think is interesting and, and different than, than when we think about uh, Callahan's work. We think about uh, Linvey's work. We think about, like, the different artists we've looked at today who have used gaze and used eye contact. And so I think that's kind of a really 
beautiful aspect of this work that, that is different um, than the other ways that like gaze is being used. As well, again, like thinking about all of this is fully being made within the domestic space. I think maybe there's one or two images where they're outside of the, the home space, but this is like fully the domestic environment and the space that they build for each other, um, which I think is really interesting. Uh, I've got a few questions. Oh, someone asked about the uh, sort of conversation of voyeurism in connection to the gaze. Voyeurism is an interesting element within this work, I guess. I don't necessarily think about it as too voyeuristic. I think because we've been granted access, like we've been given this gift, it's very different than if they had not intended us to see this work and then later we, we saw it after they had died or, or whatever, right? Like if we were kind of forced to this work was forced to be seen by us, right? But instead we've been given this gift by Zachary and Ray's and, and given this like opportunity to look into this intimate interaction that, that feels less kind of voyeuristic, I guess. Or at least I don't think about it in that sense. I think about it as this like beautiful document that they are kind of allowing us to have a look at. Um, so I think that's that's really like interesting, but I think voyeurism is an interesting topic to kind of bring up when we think about that as well, or think about like how um, we kind of use, or like how, what does it mean, especially now, I think when we're making a lot of work in our domestic space and what does it mean to open that up to a lot of other people and, and, and open up kind of very raw interactions with ourselves or with our partners and, and stuff like that, which I think is really interesting. Um, I'm going to click over to the next artist, who's Kelly Connell, who is also a professor at Columbia College, Chicago, uh, and has made this body of work double life for about 18 years, which I think is pretty incredible. And I want to come back to that. I mean, we talked about Callahan's work. That's 15 years. This is an 18 year long project uh, where it's like a collaboration between the photographer and her subject. Um, so in Double Life, Connell is really navigating and exploring like what does femininity mean? What does sexuality mean? What does intimacy in a relationship mean? How do we kind of navigate all of those things? Um, so one thing to bring up with this work is the making of it, which is kind of a pretty incredible thing. Uh, so in all of the work, there's two figures, two women that you watch kind of interact and engage with one another, right? And the way that they kind of use, I mean, this picture in particular is one of my favorites. And you think about like the kind of, the gesture that's happening, the eye contact, the way that they are engaging in interaction with, interacting with one another. But this is actually the same model photographed twice, which is like just an incredible thing to think about when you look at this work for the first time, thinking about the way that you have the same model Kiba performing both of these roles and performing both of these kind of characters and these different forms of, of these women, right? Um, and I, I also enjoy the way that Connell talks about the making of this work because she will photograph. Um, so she'll have Kiba perform like one aspect of the, the composition and then do the other. But a lot of the times Connell will stand in and act as the other one so that they can kind of create the composition, collaborate together to find the gesture and, and work with that, which I think is really interesting. Thinking again about photographers behind the camera, thinking about the way that they kind of know how to create a composition or, or collaborate with another as well. Kiba is also a photographer and artist. So thinking about to her kind of understanding of, of the role of the, the subject or also like her kind of interaction with the camera, right? Thinking about that a lot. Um, as well, this work is really interesting. We think about uh, Connell has a term that I really appreciate where she talks about the the two female figures as the two sides of the self. Um, because this work is interesting, although these are portraits of someone, of Kiba, they're actually self-portraits of Kelly Connell, which is just like such an interesting thing that I think photography can really do in a way that maybe other art really can't, is that you can use someone else as a subject to talk about yourself or to talk about someone else, right? Like using a different person as your own self-portrait, I think is really interesting. And so this kind of like, these are photographs of Kiba, but they're actually photographs of, of Kelly Connell and kind of these, these kind of like topics about femininity, about a woman's role, about how women interact with one another, about intimacy, 
all those kind of things I think is really interesting. Um, as well, I want to bring up this image. Uh, this is from Kelly Connell's website where she uh, uses, so this is how she actually makes the images themselves. This is as well on film, which originally all the work was made on film. Now it's made digitally, but she would use negatives, cut them up and create these physical collages, which I think is a really interesting element of the work of these like physical objects that she's making to figure out the right composition, the right negatives to pair together the right gestures. Um, I think it's just a really kind of this is one of my things that I love when learning more about photographers and more about their practice is the way that they actually make the work and what kind of tools they use, whether they use sketches, whether they use um, negatives like this, collages, they do it digitally, physically. It's kind of really interesting to see the process and the making of that, which I find really interesting. Um, so Connell's work as well, like you have these two women kind of performing different aspects of femininity, different aspects of like women's experiences and and as well like thinking a lot about the using the private domestic space to really like explore or engage with what does uh, sexuality mean, what does femininity mean, what does intimacy mean, what does it mean to like have these kind of very close relationships, right? And again, this body of work to watching it grow and develop over 18 years and thinking about the different ways that one these like he with the model is but also like these women and the way that kind of thinking about like representations of, of queer women and thinking about like a longer legacy of that um, as well something that I, th I think about with this work too when we think about how it was viewed or how it was experienced the first time this work was like first seen in 2002, which we think about conversations of queerness, about lesbianism, about the representation of women and female relationships is very different to what we kind of know and talk about now. So I think that's interesting too, to think about, you could probably see the way that the reaction to this work has changed or the way that um, this representation has become like continuously more important uh, as time goes on. And also interesting to see these kind of as well, watching women and watching queer women like in different um, age ranges be represented too, I think is really significant and important about this work. Like thinking about too, having this like, not just a representation of, of young women that are queer or, or, you know, women in their 80s that are queer, but kind of feeling that whole representational like spectrum, right? And thinking about how, how we document and like how we need to have like a visual document of, of every aspect of like the female queer experience. I really appreciate about the walk. Um, do we have any comments? I realized, and I knew I was going to do this, we're kind of close on time, so I might speed up just a little bit uh, because I really want to cover the last two artists that we have. Um, so I'm going to do that really quickly. So next we have uh, Melissa Ann Penny, who is as well a professor at Columbia College Chicago. And so I want to specifically talk about two bodies of work of hers regarding Emma and Celador. Um, so Melissa Ann Penny made work, her work kind of shifted in focus when her daughter was born, where she focused a lot on documenting kind of the female experience. And we kind of watch as well with regarding Emma, watch Emma grow and develop and go from this like, you watch like the, the chaotic energy that is a young kid to then the awkwardness of adolescence to this kind of adulthood, like watching her grow and transition and develop as a woman and as well see the home space exist as this like constant. I think is really interesting. We think about this work, the home space is this unchanged, unshifting environment as you watch Emma like grow and change. Um, particularly uh, Celador is a really great example of that. So this work you watch uh, the same composition of the back cellar door and you watch Emma of different ages in front of this space and you watch her kind of like shift and change. I want to bring up between this image and this one, just watching the ways like Emma age eight and Emma at 10, the different way, like how different she looks in the way that she's presenting herself in front of the camera, I think is really interesting. She just feels like this kind of very confident, very self-assured young woman, this kind of like I don't know, she feels very different, right? From this image to still kind of confident, still self-assured, but also like a different, a different young woman. I think that's really interesting. I do love long bodies of work like this again, where you watch the subject change and shift and, and watch their relationship to the camera be different and the different ways they want to represent themselves. So you can kind of see that in the way that um, 
Penny is photographing Emma and watching Emma kind of develop and change over time. Salvador is just kind of also a really great example of how photography can really like document time and in a really interesting way as well like this body of work I'm gonna go back to the first one too like thinking about this this kind of like vernacular document of of the family space and it being this really as well like universal kind of experience too when we photograph home we photograph family it's something that we can all kind of connect with and and engage with and understand and so I think it's like Penny's work gives you this beautiful view into watching this like young woman grow up and watching it again thinking about the lens of this mother photographing her daughter and watching that kind of relationship grow and as well then photographing her husband and and watching this like family structure be documented right again we talked about like the female gaze and like thinking about what it means for a female photographer to be photographing their family compared to a male photographer or who the like member of the family is that's making this work um i really enjoy the way that penny kind of photographs and, and documents her daughter and watches her as well give these like really beautiful just like time points of of young female adolescence and, and thinking about kind of what it what it means to be a young woman all these kind of questions and and uh, conversations that are happening the way that you grow and develop and the way that you kind of grow into yourself or grow into aspects of yourself or as well like Celador is such a beautiful we watch Emma like shift and change and the things she's interested in the way that she you know now we have her skateboarding the way that we watch her kind of like grow and develop and and see more of her personality see more of her as a person um and growing more into her own which I think is really interesting and as well the like comfort level between a, a mother and a daughter and, and a photographer and subject and thinking again like when we talked about McDonald's work we talk about Connell's work we talk about Calhoun's work like we the, the intimate, the relationship between the photographer and the subject is so important and the way that we get to kind of get this like look into um, this like intimate life and, and again we're looking through the lens of, of a mother photographing her daughter which would be different if this was someone coming into the family space or someone who isn't connected to Emma is very different than having someone that is as close of a link to her as her mother right so I think it's really an important like thing to think about when we look at this work. Um, does anyone have any questions about Penny's work or any comments they want to make about it? You're kind of good. I mean, it's amazing. It's incredible. We love it. It's really beautiful images. And I just think like just watching I me mean, look at the regarding Emma series, just watching this like development and change and also looking at as well in like kind of 90s early 2000s watching women um like kind of be documented be photographed and and again also thinking about when we look at the rest of Penny's work like thinking about what it the the photographer their identity their experience what how like where are they allowed to go who are they allowed to engage with the way that she's very much welcomed into this like female environment right and this like female space and and so that she's free to like navigate that um so yeah uh we have like very few time left so i really want to cover the last but not least carrie Mae weems in the kitchen table series which is one of the most incredible photographic series of all time um I mean, for those of you familiar, so Carrie Mae Weems made this body of work where she photographed herself and people of a, in her family um, and used it all at the kitchen table. Uh, so again, when we're thinking about the domestic space, thinking about the like significance of um, like this space as well, thinking about like femininity, domesticity, like thinking about this like again, thinking about a constant, thinking about an absolute, the kitchen table being this like grounding object in the space. Um, so then you have Carrie Mae Weems navigating that, using her daughter, using her partners to kind of talk about like a woman's role, thinking about like the different representations for black women, thinking about again this in this time period, the 1990s, like what it means for her to be photographing herself and, and thinking about like black identity and motherhood and domesticity and, and kind of all of these like really complicated large concepts that she's being able to look at through 
um, through this like lens of this this reoccurring space, right? Reusing the kitchen table as well, thinking about kind of these like sexist ideologies when we think about women and we think about kind of expected roles within the home and stuff like that, like kind of also pushing up against that or talking about that and, and thinking about the kind of like kitchen space or the kitchen table um, as well. Like thinking about when we use the home and what these objects kind of symbolize. Like we haven't really talked about that a lot today, but if we look at a lot of the images, we have a lot of beds, right? We have a lot of kind of those spaces and like kitchen table spaces and these like reoccurring objects that we all have, right? So thinking about what that means um, when we when we use kind of objects that we all have like a familiarity with and a connection to and, and a relationship with and have a very specific like symbol to them, right? Think about the kitchen table as this object that the family kind of get to engage with and, and exist all together with and, and thinking about what that means uh, and the way that like Carrie Mae Williams is using it within her work is this constant object that that this like the way she uses humor and she, she uses narrative structure and, and props and characters to come into the space and create like a new interaction and then leave and and so it's kind of really interesting the way that she she uses this like continuous composition to then like re like to talk about all these different topics right um, I think that's a really interesting thing. Again, thinking about photography and again, thinking about that as a very unique medium, how we can kind of reuse the same composition to talk about like using a collection of images together, right? To then create this larger narrative, create this larger um, conversation. I think is really powerful in Carrie Mae Williams' work. These are also as well, like something in previewings I like to bring up towards the end is we, when we talk about them, we talk about them in previewings, we're really unpacking the conceptual aspects of them, really talking about what they mean, how they kind of exist as objects, all these kind of things. We also don't usually take a moment to also engage with how beautiful the work is and how magical these images are and how like really incredible it is to be able to look at them and experience them. And so like these are also just incredibly beautiful images that talk about so many larger topics, thinking about, you know, again, like femininity, a woman's role, and as well, something about photography that I love and because of the way that the medium, when it was becoming popular and its birth was during a time period where um, women could kind of, uh, you know, women were able to be at the beginning of the medium, right? In a way that they want in art or they want in, in like, you know, sculpture or painting. In photography, there are like significant women at the very beginning of the importance of photography. And I think that's like, something that makes this medium very special and very unique. And you get to watch these like female creators photograph themselves, create this visual history for women and, and think about also then on top of that, especially in Carrie Mae Williams' work, thinking about like black women, thinking about Connell's work, thinking about queer women, like just thinking about kind of this importance of representation, um, which is something that comes up a lot when we think about uh, photographing the domestic space. Um, so I'm going to kind of end this print viewing. One thing I want to do before we end is I want to do one quick honorable mention to uh, Eleanor Carucci. She just posted this article with the cut that I will uh, send out to all of you where she is photographing her experience right now in quarantine and like documenting her everyday life. And they're just like really powerful, beautiful images in the way that Eleanor Carucci has always made these really beautiful, raw, honest, intimate images. Um, so I'd really recommend having a look into that. Uh, it's just like really interesting seeing as well artists who are making this work like right now and and the way that we get to see like how people are interacting with it and engaging with it and all of us still like wanting to make work right now so i think that's that's a really good thing to like look into like who's making work right now um so just one last thing uh if you want to look into this previewing will be on this website eventually and as well all of our other ones will be uh, so next week we have another graduate st student, Jordan Put, who will be uh, talking about photographing the landscape. So thinking about kind of how we are now all going on walks right now and we're kind of having these small tastes of the outside world and like what does it mean to be making work in the landscape right now? Um, so I've covered the interior, Jordan's going to cover the exterior and, and kind of the ways that photographers have used the landscape before and, and have used it as like a a tool and it becomes like a very different thing right now when we think about again photographing the landscape and, and something that we don't usually get to see as much anymore 
Um, so that's gonna be really great. I highly recommend that. Please come to all of the other photos at Zoom. We can have other graduate students talking about a lot of different other topics, thinking about still lives, thinking about social practice. So highly recommend everyone to come to all of those future ones. Um, and again, thank you all for being here. Really appreciate this. This is a really great kind of conversation. I'm glad we all got to have this together. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any last comments or anything they wanna say in the chat really quickly. A lot of really nice thank yous, which I appreciate. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much uh, for coming to this. I really appreciate it. I'm really glad we get to talk about art still while everything is like this. So thank you guys. <laughs> thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Amazing. All right, I'm going to. In this up pretty soon.